So physicists use calculus all the time. So calculus is the basis of essentially all the laws of physics. Whenever you want to study how something is changing in time or changing in space, you're going to use calculus. So you can use either differentiation or integration. It depends what it is you're studying. So differentiation is when you're trying to study exactly how fast something is moving right now, then you use differentiation to zoom in on the on what it, what how something's moving uh, or what something is doing at a particular uh, point. Um, if you want to follow how something evolves over time, you'd use integration because that basically adds up all the little bits that uh, have come from, from differentiation. You'd add them all together and that gives you uh, information about the past or indeed about the future if you want to go into the future. Calculus is very important for things like trying to put a man on the moon because you need to use it at every stage in the process. So for example, when the rocket is taking off from the Earth, the rocket needs to accelerate to take off. It needs to have enough velocity to, to get it out of the Earth's gravitational pull. So calculus is used to work out how fast it needs to be going. It's complicated because not only is the rocket moving, but the rocket is losing mass. So as it burns up its fuel, as it rises higher, it means the mass of the rocket is different. So calculus is used to take account of that as it, as it moves. Then once you get to out into space, you need to use calculus to predict where the moon is going to to be later on in the orbit because obviously when you when you get up into space you want to make sure you end up at the, at the moon and then once you get close to the moon you now have less gravity that you feel from the earth and more gravity that you feel from the moon and also you have to stop so you have to use calculus to tell you how much uh, how much you need to decelerate so that you don't crash into the surface of the moon then once you're out in space, say once you're on the moon um, or uh, if the astronaut is doing a spacewalk, again, they can sometimes have little uh, packs that produce a small jet of gas and that just moves them very slowly. And again, there's a force uh, the, the pack will produce something that uh, blasts a little bit of gas out behind them and that will just put a very gentle force that nudges them in the direction that they want to move. But to describe the motion of planets, we use calculus to work out the orbits that they're going to follow. So again, you have in the center of, the, of a, a planetary system, you'll have a star and you'll have various uh, planets, maybe like a, in, in our case in the solar system, you've got eight planets, but you work out the forces that are acting on them due to the star at the center and sometimes due to each other, because sometimes the planets get close enough that they feel each other's gravity. And calculus again tells you in uh, it tells you how fast the planets are moving at particular times, but by integrating that over time, so adding up all the little changes to their motion, you then get a picture of how the planets will evolve over time, and so you'll see how they evolve in the future as well. 